there was so much care put into that scene, both like emotionally and on a visual level. Um, I think what uh, where a lot of the intensity comes from is that by this time in the movie, you care so much about anxiety. She's really not a villain. She's she's just someone doing her best uh, to try and do her job to the best of her ability. And I think the fear that you have in that scene is fear that she might not be okay. Uh, and I think that's really lovely because that means that you know that she's necessary, that, that uh, in some form, anxiety is a part of us and we don't actually want it to go away. The thing that... Uh... I love most about Lance is that um, we really wanted him to look kind of that like first generation PlayStation kind of oh, yeah. level rendering. And everyone at Pixar is so good. It, it was really hard for Kelsey and everybody to like make sure that they just embrace making this character look that sort of like low polygon count. <laughs> Hey, Rebecca, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys? We are doing so well. Like Laura said, my name's Daniel. And my name is Shabazz. Great. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. We are so excited to talk about this film. Uh, just forewarning, just in case, like, we have, uh, we'll be releasing this after the premiere okay. this weekend. So you'll be free to talk all the spoilers you yeah, like. So don't worry. Territory. I know it's you've probably been living with this for so long. So I, I guess the first question I just want to ask, you know, now that Inside Out 2 is out in the world like how does it feel to finally be able to talk about it and to have like your friends and family see it it's so strange i started working on this film in 2021 when it was like extremely early days uh and i worked on it for three entire years and just have had to keep very mum about it the whole time could never talk about it to anybody um and so it's very strange to now think I could just walk down the street and hear someone say their opinion of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that even us, like like once we've seen it, we're like, oh God, like, could we even like talk about this? And when we were doing our review, it's like, oh, we could, you know, we could kind of go all out now and, and yeah, share now our thoughts can, and our finally. feelings and our emotions on it. And as we said, we love this movie. It's absolutely incredible. And it's something that has been staying with us since watching it. So just congratulations to you and the entire team. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really, really glad you liked it. Now, is there like a specific shot or moment in Inside Two that Inside Two that you're really excited for audiences to kind of check out? If I can be selfish and talk about something that I worked on and I feel kind of proud of is that uh, I worked on the belief system a lot. Riley's belief system. I was involved sort of in like the initial asset deciding, you know, what's the scene going to look like? How are we supposed to feel? And when I watch it now, I feel very proud that I can be like, wow, that like my thumbprint is on that a little bit. I can see my hand in it still. Um, and I'm so happy with how it turned out, like with all the color and, and light. Like, I think it's just gorgeous. It's a really beautiful scene. It, we're watching so nice. it and like the evolution of that scene as well, you know, the different changes yeah. that it goes through. Yep. That must have been so difficult to kind of like continuously map it out as to where it starts and the kind of where it ends. Yeah. I mean, like we get a lot of help. There's like uh, there's, you know, we have a writer, we have a director um, and uh, our wonderful head of story, John, were all there to make sure that the continuity really worked. And I only had to focus on making sure that it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> There's something we love so much in in the sense itself is just like the strings that all connect through Riley. And they're they're like they remind us a lot of like just like guitar like guitar strings mm -hmm. and like harps yeah. like harps like yeah. when you pluck them and you see the little the music vibrations through that and that's so it's so cool and i think there's so many moments in this film that we're just like oh that's so clever and that's just the pixar way one thing that we had to obviously call out as canadians is that uh showing hockey and mm -hmm. perfecting the look of hockey and animation uh, you know what went into those scenes and like really like some of the most like beautiful animation in the film we was on the ice so what could you tell us about working on those sequences or a little behind the scenes of that there was like a ton of visual research that went into the hockey stuff and just for myself personally like i had a reputation to live up to <laughs> like as one of the, <laughs> on the story crew i was like oh man i really have to brush up and make sure i know all the rules off by heart and <laughs> if there's any mistakes in here i'll never hear the end of it from my family <laughs> <laughs> so we did a ton of visual research. We watched games. Uh, our director, Kelsey, was in touch with an actual like middle school age hockey team in the Bay Area just to sort of like get the visual reference of like, okay, non-professional hockey players. What do they move like and what do they look like? And then the animation supervisor, like the head of animation on the film is also Canadian. Evan Bonifacio is also Canadian. A lot of strong Canadians pulling up. Oh yeah. Canada mm -hmm. showing up at Pixar for sure. <laughs> 
Now you mentioned that you you're a story artist. Artist, what does that exactly entail? Like, what does your job, your day to day, look like at Pixar? Basically, what I do is I'm the story artists are the first people to take a visual swing at the film. So when I hear about the movie, it's just script pages. That's all I've got is I've got words on a page. So my director will give me some script pages and then I'll sort of squirrel myself away in my dark office for a couple of days. And I'll do hundreds of these just black and white drawings that I'll assemble into a sort of slideshow uh, with the intent of pitching them back to the director and saying, you know, the film could look like this. If we decided to spend all of the time and energy animating and lighting it, it could be a much more beautiful version of this. When you're working on a sequence like that, like how often is it that your first idea is what is that makes it into the oh, film yeah. or how many iterations do you find yourself going through sometimes that before that final film and before it goes to the all the other teams to work on? There are some scenes that I worked on on this film that I had to keep returning to over the course of three years. I probably worked on them 12 or 13 times. Wow. Over like just different different versions. But then there's some stuff that for some reason you pitch it once and it lives forever. <laughs> it just goes all the way to the end. And you can never really predict what that's going to be. Uh, there are some jokes that were pitched in the very first screening that just still survive. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I mean, if a uh, joke works, it works. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, you know, one of, one of the scenes that, you know, Shane and I kept thinking about after watching this film and we were lucky to speak to the cast and to your director kelsey and producer mark about it was the anxiety scene when we're when we're seeing everything kind of boil to the very top and we just love to get insight into what went into making that scene because for us it really was one of the scariest things that we've mm -hmm. seen in a movie because of how real it felt and i think seeing anxiety and seeing joy you know come together in that moment was so powerful. So we'd love to know more about how that came together. There was so much care put into that scene, both like emotionally and on a visual level. Um, I think what uh, where a lot of the intensity comes from is that by this time in the movie, you care so much about anxiety. She's really not a villain. She's, she's just someone doing her best uh, to try and do her job to the best of her ability. And I think the fear that you have in that scene is fear that she might not be okay. Uh, and I think that's really lovely because that means that you know that she's necessary, that that uh, in some form anxiety is a part of us and we don't actually want it to go away. Yeah, 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 very true. Now, something that we really love about, you know, both the first Inside Out and Inside Out 2 is we get to see more than just the emotions inside of Riley's head. We get to see the father and the mother and obviously other characters throughout now, for yourself, how would you draw the emotions inside of your head? Oh, I mean, probably my my very my mop of hair <laughs> gotta be part. Of it. <laughs> I feel like all of my I it would just be nine anxieties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny because like, the bus driver had like I think like nine different angry ones. Yeah, so yeah, I think I'd have, I'd have a couple anxieties myself for sure. One wearing a hat, one without glasses. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, obviously, you've been in the world of animation for, for a while. Um, we'd love to know, if, if you're willing to share with us, what were some of those, you know, landmark films for you? What were those core memory films that made you want to get into the world of animation? Oh, God, there's been so many. I feel like I've been a life, a genuinely lifelong animation fan. Um, uh, I the Aladdin left a huge impression on me when I was a kid. I watched it a million times. I'm sure my parents hated it. Um <laughs> Uh, Bug Life is uh, yeah. what oh, remains yeah. my favorite Pixar film. Uh, yes. I just love it so much. It's so funny. Justice like, for Bugs Life. 100%. Justice for Bugs Life. Um, and uh, um, I love, I saw much too young, far too young. I, at seven years old, I saw Princess Mononoke, the Studio Ghibli film. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, okay. which you didn't see as a seven-year-old. Um, yeah, yeah. talk it, about it, new emotions for sure. Yeah, <laughs> um, it did leave like a really strong impression on me uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, but uh, I don't know, just like the amalgamation of like those three, I feel like you could be like Disney, Pixar and Ghibli sort of like formed me. And then I was, I also grew up a huge anime and manga fan. So that stuff Love is that. crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. Rebecca, we're, we're so grateful for your time. Thank you so much again. We absolutely love what you've done with this film and we really hope that we get to talk to you again. So all the best on everything you're working on and we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much guys. Hi, John. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for asking. My name is Shabazz. And I'm Daniel. It's such a pleasure to finally talk to you about this film. We absolutely loved Inside Out 2. And I'm sure that 
you're probably so excited to talk about this movie. Yeah, it's uh, been a long time uh, coming. These these movies always take you know take us a few years, so it's always nice when you're on the other side of it and starting to get uh, feedback from the audience and see how it's uh, really uh, playing with everyone. Yeah, and it definitely it seems to be hitting all the right notes with everybody, which is really exciting. We got to start off by asking you, first of all, you know, your role at Pixar is a story supervisor. What does that exactly entail? And what do you typically do on a day-to-day basis? Story supervisor is wearing a lot of different hats. Um, I could be uh, working with the director and the writers, kind of helping craft the 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 story, uh, figuring out what the beats are, and 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 doing a little bit of writing here and there. Um, it could be uh, working with the story team. Uh, we break the movie into sequences, so like a movie could be made up of you know twenty eight or more sequences. And uh, so I'll be working with the art artists on what they're currently working on. Uh, you know, helping them anything from, uh, composition to, uh, oh, this, you know, this part isn't working. How can we, how can we make this play better? What's some extra gags? How can we add a little, a little extra funny here? And then, uh, once those are, uh, they'll, they'll pitch them to me and the, the director and we'll give notes. And then that stuff goes to editorial and I'll work with, uh, Kelsey, the director and Marissa, our lead editor. And I'll be doing super quick drawings in editorial as we're crafting the sequence and shifting it and trying to get it play as 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 best as we can. And then the you know we'll we'll get all of those reels together and and up on the screen and we'll play the whole movie in storyboard form. Screen it for the studio, get a bunch of notes, rip it all apart, and then do all <laughs> of that stuff all over again like eight or nine times. Wow, that's that's yeah. wild. It's, Exciting. It's, 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 that's so cool to think of it like that. I mean, and and also full disclosure. Uh, we're going to be releasing this after the film has come out, so feel free to talk spoilers with us as well, too. Okay. Um, there's so many sequences in the, in, in this film and that we just want to talk about. Obviously, we're going to get to that. But like yeah. the way you were making it sound with all the departments, it reminds me so much of like Riley's mind with all these different departments working and then right. come together and, and make that happen. Um, we I, I, we have to talk to you, especially because you're wearing that shirt. I'm wearing this hat. Uh, <laughs> you guys got hockey so right in this movie. Oh, it's so that's cool great. See how you just you all just nailed that, and we were so excited to talk to Kelsey about that too. And he's like, "Yeah, like yeah. I I know nothing about hockey, so we had people come in and, and to help like make those scenes work." And I would just love if you had some insight from your side what that looked like bringing those you know that story of hockey to life. As a Canadian, I never thought that I would get to. Uh, do uh, draw storyboards for of characters playing hockey. And I did on this movie. Um, I got to board a lot of the hockey in the opening of the movie all the way through the thread, the needle and the scoring of the goal and all that. So uh, that was super fun and getting to, you know, look at uh, footage of some of my favorite players and different games and everything, just to kind of try to figure out, you know, how to shoot it and how to, uh, even how to draw it, like just the finding, uh, you know, you kind of have default poses that you'll put a character in when they're, you know, standing yeah. and <laughs> stuff like that. But like when they're on ice and skates, I had to like go, oh yeah, how do you, if you're doing this, what does the pose look like? And so pulling so much reference and also just kind of a good excuse to watch hockey while you're playing, while you're at yeah, work. Yeah. Who were you uh, looking um, at? Would you, would you say like, what were you, any certain players, any of your favorite players that you're looking uh, at? I think... I wasn't looking at specific players. I I was watching a lot of uh, like highlight reels of like spectacular goals and things yeah. like that. Like it took us it took us a while to sort of figure out like what's the thread the needle move and and also what are we going to call what we ended up calling the thread the needle move and how can that be fun and exciting and 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 things like that. So it was a lot of that. And then um, there's another woman on the on the show. Uh, Tracy, who was also one of our kind of go-to hockey gurus, and she coaches a lot of hockey, and was so was so helpful in us kind of crafting and finding the authenticity. Because I knew, you know, I'm no uh, expert. I'm just sort of like a a a, a fan that sits back and and watches. Um, but she, you know, has coached and understood girls hockey, and there's certain rules, differences and things like that, that I wasn't even aware of. So oh, wow. uh, it was sort of all of us working together to kind of 
dial in and find that authenticity and fun. That's awesome. We love it. It shows. It definitely shows on screen. That's great. Yeah, we were uh, we were definitely cheering a lot when we saw hockey pop up, and we watched this movie in the states. And everyone just kind of looked at us like, why are you guys so excited? Like, it's just hockey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, but you don't get it. This is our sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got, we got to ask, you know, is there any like specific shot or a moment from Inside Out 2 that you're really, really excited for audiences to get to see? I think that is a great question. I think there's, I don't know, there's there's a lot of things that are, are super uh, fun in this. I think... Uh, we go to Riley's secrets vault and there's some really fun new characters that we introduce there that I think is really great. I think the sort of avalanche that happens uh, later in the movie was just something we were really excited about. Uh, the artist really crushed it, boarding it. And then uh, Bill Atrall, the our uh, effect supervisor, he and his team just made that sequence look um, unbelievable. Same with uh, the brainstorm, which I was really happy uh, that we did that. Um, he and his team did an amazing job on that. Um, so there, yeah, I think there's like a lot of fun sequences that are, you know, expansions of the world. Word. Uh, let's try that again. Expansions of the world and just uh, really fun uh, sort of plays on, you know, things that we talk about that we do in our brains, but then actually bringing uh, uh, a, a visual to it uh, is pretty fun. I think when you look at like the like the avalanche scene that you're talking about, what, what was so crazy about it is a lot of it reminded me of like the Lion King with the score, how impactful it was. And oh, just wow. The way that it's kind of going down. But I, yeah. I, I don't think, I think the thing that, you know, maybe the team isn't realizing is how big of a hit you guys have with Lance Slashblade. <laughs> <laughs> That like that yes. character alone, just another movie, another show, whatever you want to do. That's fantastic. The thing that uh, I love most about Lance is that um, we really wanted him to look kind of that like first generation PlayStation kind of oh, yeah. level rendering. And everyone at Pixar is so good. It It was really hard for Kelsey and everybody to like, make sure that they just embrace making this character look that sort of like low polygon count <laughs> because everyone just wants to make everything look amazing. And the rest of the yeah. movie does look just absolutely incredible. So that was kind of a fun little win that we were able to make Lance look like a, you know, a video game character from 15 years ago. That's so funny. Perfectly imperfect. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there, there's another, another sequence that we really want to talk to you about, of course, is the, when we really start to see anxiety consume Riley. And that was a moment for us watching that truly was terrifying, but also so surreal to watch because you know that exact feeling. Um, and we'd love if you could give, you know, your perspective working on that sequence, working on it with the team and bringing that moment to life because it really is, I think, one of the most like powerful moments I've ever seen in a Pixar movie. It was always a balance with, anxiety of um you know earlier screenings we did get the note a lot of like this movie is making me feel too anxious <laughs> and so we really had to find the balance with her character um uh and you know we were all in agreement though that when you get to that moment of like it's okay if people are feeling anxious here because that's how riley's feeling and that's that's what's going on right now and so you know dialing that up and and really uh, triggering, uh, you know, a panic attack or an anxiety attack in Riley was, you know, this sort of jeopardy that we wanted her to be in. And we want to enjoy trying to get back to kind of try and figure out how she could help Riley and what they were going to do. And it just sort of all of that kind of came together nicely. It's sort of funny. You sort of find each we, you know, we. I was talking earlier about putting these screenings up and we'll screen the movie like eight or nine times for, for everybody at the, like internally before we show it anywhere outside of the studio. And you sort of find these like little threads each time. And you're like, Oh, this part's playing really great. And then you kind of build off of there and build off of there. So we had sort of like little components here and there of the anxiety and anxiety spinning up and, we just sort of kept building it out until it ended up where we were at with uh, what you saw in the movie. It's, it's so it's so impactful. We were so excited to 
to see it again and relive that because it, it really was incredible. Absolutely. John, we want to thank you so much for your time. You know, we had an absolute blast talking with you. Before thank you. we quickly just end off here, really quick question for you. If you were to draw the emotions out of your head, how do you think they would look? <laughs> uh, I could see them looking pretty similar to the ones that are that are in the movie. Uh, anxiety is maybe at the console a little more than I would like. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, uh, we got to keep it in check, right? We love that. We love that. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for your time. And we Thank absolutely you. love this movie and we can't wait for more people to watch it as well. Thanks so much. <laughs>